welcome to the MVP show. My intention is that you listen to the stories of these MVP guests and are inspired to become an MVP and bring value to the world through your skills. If you have not checked it out already, I do a YouTube series called How to Become an MVP. The link is in the show notes. With that, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is from England. He works at TNP, the NAV People, as a Development Standards Lead. He was first awarded as MVP in 2023. His passion lies in writing clean and efficient code. And uh, he's a community contributor, and he creates free tools to support fellow developers. He's got two decades of experience specializing in .NET development uh, in the area specifically to support Dynamics NAV and BC, Business Central. You can find links to his bio, social media, etc. in the show notes for this episode, as always. Welcome to the show, Andres. Hello. Well, nice to be here. Good to have you on. Now, that your name doesn't sound like a, a typically British or English name. So where are you from originally? So I'm originally from Poland. I moved to UK like nine years ago. Um, and, you know, I've been living there, for, yeah, as I said, not last nine, nine years in UK, working in, at the NAF people all the time. Nice. What what do you um when you consider uh what you do when you're not working? Okay, so if we put the the Microsoft dynamic side of things to one side, what do you do, you know, for fun? Uh what, where do you like to eat and what food are you into and anything about your family? Oh, okay. So uh so when I'm when I'm not working, yeah, I'm still playing with a computer playing and doing some some stuff that uh, uh writing some obviously writing community tools which is outside of work hours so so part of this time is consumed by by that type of work um and then i like to read books and uh sometimes ride the bike but I don't have much time for that, yeah? and I have, I have wife and two sons, so um, that's what that's what you know, consumes all my time, or remaining time. Yeah. Do you ever get back to Poland much? Usually, it's once a year. Like today, I in Poland, uh, yeah, visiting my parents. So I'm not now. I'm sitting at their home. Um, enjoying, enjoying the weather, enjoying the, and currently enjoying the night. Yeah. But. T- tell me about the community tools that you developed. Uh, what are they? What are they typically used for? Who's mainly using them? Um, so, so it's one slight bigger tool, and it's uh, it started. I was looking at it recently. I was trying to just see how when when i really started and i I saw that the first commit in my repository was from december 2017 so that's a lot of time uh so it was when when microsoft moved um dynamics nav developers to business central and introduced new language and they switched from the cal in dynamics nav to uh, al in business central and switch and give us give it the, the business central developers um, a new development environment which is VS Code. Uh, I was thinking that I would like to add something, something more. And uh, at the time, uh, I started with a small thing, yes, yeah? small small modifications, small um, panels and windows in VS Code. Uh, and then I was just adding stuff, adding stuff, you know, realizing that the original first name that I gave to my extensions was very bad because it was just the you know, name of the single one, one the smallest just panel on the side. Um, uh, so, so I started adding some wizards that help people to quickly start creating, writing the code. Then I was adding um, some 
some commands to VS Code that you, know, you can run, and then will they will transform your code, like fixing some small problems that can be is automatically detected. Uh, and people were then uh, creating on in, in the GitHub repository. They were posting some issues, so uh, were asking for some additional commands helping them with uh, with the code. Yeah, and and it was just growing this way. So um, probably I'm guessing that uh, the most uh, frequently used functionality are the wizards. Where you can quickly just start, uh, start writing your, your code. Just start. You, you're not starting with empty, empty file. You just have something really uh, quickly created, like creating a page. We just select the fields and just it dumps them to the page, uh, and things like that. Uh, but also the mm, the commands cleaning code are the, are the other functionalities that people are using. Mm. Yeah, how how do you distribute it? Is it is it just in like GitHub or is it uh, on a um, is it uh, is there a specific uh, tool community? Like, so I come more from the Dynamics three six five of the house side of the house um, for customer engagement, and there was a tool developed some years ago by a French MVP called Tangai, and he created uh, what was called the XRM toolbox, and that has become pretty much the standard that all developers release their tool within that toolbox set. And that of course gets global distribution and it's kind of taken a life as a, of its own. It's got hundreds now of, of applications, but it's designed for more that CE side of the house, maybe um, even some power platform tools in there. Do you have a similar thing in the business central slash nav landscape for distribution? So if we're talking about Dynamics Nav and Business Central, we're talking about completely different development environments. Yeah, uh, I don't know how much you know about the Business Dynamics Nav or architecture. Uh, just in, in, in Dynamics Nav, the code was in a database, and you have a client that's connecting is connecting to the database, and you are basically developing inside the database. Uh, while the switch to Business Central was something that was uh, for developers that were, you know, the, the developers that started with Business Central and had this in-client development environment uh, that keeps every all the code inside the database, and and, and suddenly um, those people got the development environment that any other development developers from any, working with any other language know and see each day, which is. Now you have your coding files, yeah. So, uh, uh, and the development environment now is Visual Studio Code, that Microsoft in Visual Studio Code Marketplace uh, um, gives us the, the Microsoft compiler and the and and the VS Code extensions with the, the functionality allowing us to write and write in in AL language and and, and running it, deploying, compiling. Uh, so, so, so the way to distribute it for Business Central is very easy. You just write another Visual Studio Code extension and publish it to Microsoft uh, with the VS Code Marketplace. Ah, so it's the VS Code Marketplace. So, is where if another developer would go and find it. Yes. Yes. Do you have any stats on its usage or anything like any to like telemetry data? I don't want to have telemetry. So I don't have telemetry and I don't want to introduce any telemetry into my extension because I don't want to give to, to install on people machines something that sends data anywhere. Yeah, people sometimes people some people sometimes might be might be asking, what's your extension? Is your extension sending any data? Because they may have some rules in the company and they want to uh, yeah, they the cybersecurity team is a well, we don't trust anything, yeah. So, so they may not want it. So, I don't want to have anything there. So then, people start complaining. Yeah, if something goes wrong, oh, your extension is sending data somewhere. No, I just, it's just for you. Just install it, and I'm not doing anything. And it, I don't want to know anything that you're doing. I'm just giving you a tool. So, what about downloads? And do you have kind of an understanding of how how, how big the user base? Yes, we, I can check. I can check. Uh, well, I can go to VS Code Marketplace and 
and check quickly uh, uh, and check quickly the the numbers. So we go here. And and is this how is this tool one of the main reasons you became an MVP, or was it something else? Uh, that was the main reason uh, because I'm just mainly focusing on this one. So so currently I can see that there is two hundred twenty eight. Thousands and fourteen installs. That's what I can see. Wow, close to quarter of a million downloads. That's incredible. Yeah, but but you, know, you don't know how how many people are using it because if you're installing VS Code on your machine or maybe remotely on a customer server or maybe somewhere else, then the number will go up. While really, you're changing your laptop and then you're installing your VS Code again. And as I said, I started it. 27 in December 2017. So I'm guessing that people that start using it at the time, they probably change their, their work laptop two or you know, maybe two or three times. So, do 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 you have kind of a community around it? Do people ask you for features and and things to be added? And yes, yes, people asking for for things yeah, on 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 GitHub. You just write an issue and. And then I, I will I will try to do something about it. That's awesome. I mean, and and it's totally phenomenal that you create this tool that obviously is saving, I assume, other developers a heck of a lot of time in in what they're doing with Business Central. Yeah, I'm obviously, I'm, I'm also trying to to present something on Business Central conferences a few times during the year, but. But the main focus, my main main focus in on on this tool, I just I can sit and then write a bit of new functionality, maybe fix some bugs, maybe change something because we have a new version of Business Central with new compiler. So then sometimes I need to fix something and remove some, fix some breaking changes in the in the extension. Uh, but yeah, but the conferences are also something that I'm, I'm trying to go them and just present something. When you consider conferences and you're speaking, what topics would you typically talk about? Let's take a quick break. Are you ready to transform your career in just 90 days? Join me on the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge and unlock your full potential. As a listen to the podcast, enroll now and get 10% off using the code MBAP. That's MBAP at the checkout. Don't miss this opportunity to learn from industry leaders and accelerate your growth. Visit ako.nz365guy.com and start your journey today. Something related to development. Something... Mm. I'm trying to find a subject that uh, is uh, you know, code related. Maybe something about quality of the code. Maybe something how to write the code. Something like that. I, and I can see why, because I mean, in your title it says "Development Standards Leads." Uh, so leads. So I take it that you. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Are uh, developing the dev- sorry, designing the development standards used by your organization and your team, which I assume involves a lot of best practice and how you like to see things done. Yeah, and, and I'm responsible for our development standards. It it came later yeah, after my tool it was uh, it, the tool was visible. People were using it, so then. I was trying. I was trying to speak on some conferences, and also I became development standard leads in the company to be responsible for the standards and to mm, um, to try to guide people. Mm. Without mentioning any company names or people's names, etc., what's kind of the largest project that you've been involved with, BC? Hmm. And large might be complex, you know, not just number of people. There were some projects where um, we were implementing. Uh, we had a few projects where we were implementing solutions in multiple countries, where um, 
we had to deliver multiple business central extensions for those companies because uh because business central localized versions for those countries uh are slightly different. There are different requirements in those different countries. Mm. So I don't know how big it really was because mm. I was not constantly involved with something helping people with those projects. Uh, but there were some big, I mean, big. As I said, I don't know the numbers, so I cannot tell you. Yeah. What industry was it in? It was education, one of the most education, yeah. some production also. There was another one. So interesting, interesting. So you've been an MVP for some time. How did that originally come about? How did you get nominated um, and get invited into the program? So I was I was invited by by other MVPs, um, by 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 the, uh, other other Polish MVP. Yeah, he nominated me, mm. and then I had to go through all this uh, validation process. Uh, but it happened. But I was, uh, I was already part of the community. It was a few years after I started building those tools, uh, and also I was trying to already present something on the conferences, and then the, the nomination came. Yeah, a, a bit later, and yeah, you know, in, in this community we have in business terms, obviously there are some MVPs, but also there are there are there are people that are not MVPs, but also are part of the community that are building some tools, or presenting on the conferences. <clears throat> When you became an MVP prior to be, being an MVP, what was the biggest changes? What were the biggest surprises in coming into the MVP program that you didn't realize before you were you, before you became one? I don't think that there was a big, very big change. Like, obviously, you're getting some some access to some knowledge from Microsoft. You need to sign sign NDA, and then and and, and then you can. Mm, you can be invited, yeah, some to, to some calls. Microsoft may share some information with you. So that was that was interesting thing uh, to be able to see those things, uh, to, to learn something, um, some internal information. Well, that was the, you know, the, the biggest changes mm. because I'm, I'm still focusing on building the tools. So that that was not changing much. The final question I have for you is around a word that's on everybody's lips nowadays, which is AI. When you, and I'm not, I don't want to talk specifically about co-pilots or anything. I'm not talking about Microsoft AI. I'm just talking about AI in general. How is it uh, changing the way you work, the way you do things? How are you personally using AI? What I'm doing with AI is... Uh... I'm asking the questions when I need to write something and I'm not sure how to find some information, like how to call some APIs, mm. uh, how to call the API or how to achieve something um, in, for example, PowerShell. Uh, and then I'm just, just asking you know, Bing chat, how can I do that in PowerShell or in other language? And then, and then I'm getting the answer, a bit of code that I can, I can look at. And, oh, okay, that's how to do it. And, and this is a very interesting thing because uh, if you, uh, I noticed something very interesting, uh, which probably doesn't. Uh, it's a, it's it's amazing thing, but also it's a bit sad thing. Uh, so I was some time ago, and maybe it was a year ago. I don't remember. I was trying to, uh, I was writing some internal company code, uh, some internal extensions or VS code, and I had to do something with uh, with source control. I wanted to trigger some something on GitHub, and I and I and I read 
hit the wall. I was not able to find any information how to how to just switch to turns one of the switches in one of the comments. But I found that there was a discussion on GitHub uh, about about this 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 switch. But I was not able to find anything in the documentation. And the the issue on GitHub was closed. We did it. Yeah, it's done. And uh, so 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 I had absolutely no idea how to do it. And then and then I asked Chat GPT how to do it. And it just wrote me a code that I just copied the code from there and yeah, it worked. So so that's you may think that it's amazing. Uh but with the thing, so but you see that you know, it was somewhere. Yeah? It was a very small thing, which was hard to find uh, in the documentation. So, so I realized that, and I also found out that many times we're doing something with uh, with some APIs when you need to call something. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah? It doesn't matter who provides the API. Sometimes, sometimes the only way to find it is to yeah, well easiest way to find it is let's go to GitHub and start searching for it in the in the open source repositories and then you will find it. Um, so this is this is an amazing thing that AI can because AI index AI index a lot of open source repositories. Yeah, it knows this code, so it it can find it. Um, so that's how that's how I'm currently using it. Yeah, just asking it for. Uh, for examples of the code when I need to call something, call API. Not necessarily write me code that can do that, uh, but how to call the API. This is so cool. I love it. I love it. It's practical. And I lo- and, and that nuanced thing of knowing something had been solved, but you know, often you can't find documentation. And what a great way to potentially uncover um, how to find um, a solution. Yeah. Yeah, that I said that's a bit sad that you that is finding that uh, we as a developer sometimes really failing with providing good documentation, uh, but then somebody wrote this code and it's in open source repository, so we're just looking for code examples. Final question: Anything else you would like to say to folks aspiring to become an MVP? If somebody wants to be an MVP, then I would say try to. Help the community. Think, think about some, think about the impact you could have on the community by helping people, uh, and then people will recognize you, and then you will, you may have a chance to be MVP because we'll be helping. You. That's really that I can say about something inspiring. Uh, yeah, just try to help the community, and then you will feel good seeing that that you're helping those people. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 guy. If you like the show and want to be a supporter, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365 guy. Thanks again and see you next time.